everybody, it's Zone here, and I'm coming back at it again for another amazing video for you guys. And after much request and with the success of my new Super Mario Bros. Uh, DS review, I'm going to be coming back and doing another game review and maybe turn this into an entire series. Who knows where this is going to go, but the future looks pretty bright for my reviews. Anyways, today we're taking a look at Mario Kart 8, the Wii U edition. Not the digital uh, deluxe edition, but I will touch on that in this review. This is just going to be a quick look at the game and what makes this game probably one of the best Mario Kart games in the entire series and what makes it stand out from the rest. We're going to do a deep dive into the graphics, the gameplay, the tracks, sound, and we're just going to take a good look at this game and see if it's definitely worth your money, because personally, I think it is. So let's dive right into this review. After almost five years of this game being out, Mario Kart 8 has proven to be one of the most graphically impressive Mario games of all time. The carts and character models look absolutely phenomenal in HDTV and all of the tracks are just the same, along with some very bright and vibrant colors that really catch the eye. My personal favorite has got to be the Super Nintendo Entertainment System's Rainbow Road, or SNES for short. At least graphically speaking anyways, this track is amazing, it definitely captures the spirit of a Rainbow Road, unlike some other track in this game, and it's just all around beautiful and is a marvel to look at. I mean. Gosh, graphically speaking, this game absolutely deserves all the praise in the fucking world. It's it's amazing, and I love it to death. So A plus on graphics, Nintendo. Good job. Overall, the gameplay for this game doesn't feel that all different from Mario Kart Wii, and honestly, feels like a massive HD overall of the Wii release for Mario Kart. Every single track is a hell of a lot of fun to race on between other players, AI racers, and having to deal with the spam of power-ups that are literally everywhere while racing will provide some seriously intense gameplay that will make you want to throw your Wii U tablet against the wall after about an hour or so. The controls make the gameplay feel 10 times better with the gamepad and make turning and drifting feel way, way smoother. Trust me on this one. It's way better than the tilt controls. Drifting has also improved greatly from Mario Kart Wii. I remember never ever being able to use the manual whatsoever. I always stuck with automatic because I did not like the drifting in the game. However, I used to drift a shit ton in Mario Kart DS. Now, the drifting in Mario Kart 8 feels like that of Mario Kart DS, and it handles perfectly. I highly recommend you take advantage of drifting in any race you're in. It can either make or break a race for you. Trust me on that one. This game features a ton of offline content, as should any Mario Kart game, with over 5 different CC levels of difficulty, an offline battle mode, time trials, 12 different cups, and over 48 different tracks counting the DLC once to race on. With all these features, there's plenty of things that'll keep you busy for years, and I still haven't beaten everything and I've had this game for almost three years now. While on the subject of things to do, there was also plenty of stuff offered in the multiplayer section of this game as well, including online racing against 12 other people worldwide in an online battles mode as well. You can choose to play against people in your country or race across the globe and vote with other players for the next course in your lobby. The, pl uh, blah, blah, blah. the multiplayer course selection has also been greatly improved from the last game, and hopping into races only takes a few seconds compared to Mario Kart Wii, where you'd have to be waiting for a few minutes or so to get into a game. It's a nice improvement, but Nintendo still can't figure out their friend code thing. Wah, wah. One of the most important things that any Mario Kart game has to have is a good variety of characters and vehicles to use, and this game delivers very well in this category. However, unlike the Wii game, instead of picking a cart you're going to race with, Mario Kart 8 takes a note from its predecessor, Mario Kart 7, and brings in the Create Your Own Cart feature. To summarize this, you have three selections of parts, your cart body, your wheels, and then your glider. You mash them up together, and you can get some weird hybrid racing machine to destroy your opponents with. There are big carts, big wheels, small wheels, different gliders that can help determine your weight or your acceleration, and the tires can help out with your speed or traction. It's, it's all very, very unique, and sometimes the weirdest combinations of parts can make for some of the best carts in the game. Trust me on that one. Get a little wild with it and have fun. This feature just allows you to get super creative and have a lot of fun in the multiplayer since you get to have a bit of an advantage over some of your opponents if you know what parts are good and what parts are bad. It's a very nice feature, and the carts that I've made have been wacky as hell. I mean, I put, um, freaking button wheels that are these tiny little wheels that are, like, bright blue on a freaking shoe and raced as Roy, and I had a cloud glider. That's the weirdest combination of a cart you could possibly have, but I don't give a fuck. 
Now let's get on to the characters. Of course, with the traditional lineup of Mario, Luigi, Peach, Donkey Kong, Wario. I think you guys get the idea. They added Shy Guy as a playable character, which is awesome. And Yoshi, who has been in the game, obviously. But the cool thing they did for that is with their DLC variants, you get to play as eight different color variations of both Yoshi and Shy Guy, which is fucking great. I mean, that technically doubles the amount of characters you already get. On top of the other seven DLC characters, a couple Animal Crossing characters, Link, Dry Bowser, and those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head, which is awesome. But I've still got one complaint about the character roster. Nintendo, where the fuck is my main monkey, Funky Kong? What happened to my main monkey? Honestly, Nintendo, that has got to be the shittiest part about this game, is the fact that you don't get to play as FUNKY KONG! Like, like, fuck you. Fuck you, Nintendo. Fuck you. Like, fuck, fuck this game and fuck you for not bringing in Funky Kong. Final feature that I want to touch on in this game is the tracks. Overall, they are very well designed, but there are definitely a few flaws. All the new courses that have been added are great additions and are all very fun to play, but there's one particular track that has rubbed me the wrong way. The new Rainbow Road on the Space Station. No, I'm not talking about the two remastered beauties, the Space Station one. I think I also gave away my reasoning for hating it. The fact that it's on a space station. Rainbow Road needs to be just a rainbow that you drive around on with annoying obstacles and jam chomps. Not a fucking space station. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but it just kind of throws off the vibe of Rainbow Road when you're on a space station. Alright, this isn't Star Wars. This is fucking Mario Kart, okay? Jesus. Another thing that bothers me is the inclusion of the new gameplay features such as the glider into the retro courses. The best example of this is DS's Wario Stadium Reboot. Now this track also rubs it the wrong way due to the vibes it gives off. It throws it off for me because I love the original DS Wario Stadium, but it's ruined from the track being changed from night to day and the inclusion of an entire section of a glider pad and spin boost. I mean, I get adding these new features into the retro courses, but for me, it just kind of makes them completely different tracks, and this is the best example of that. It changes the track completely. It has a water section in a dirt bike style stadium. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever other to show off the new features in the game. The way I see it, if you're going to do retro courses, just leave them the way they are. In other words, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In short, although it has a few slight flaws with the tracks, Mario Kart 8 is still a phenomenal game and is absolutely worth your time and money. Although, personally, I prefer the Wii version, this game is still a hell of a lot of fun and is a great sequel for the console editions of Mario Kart. It's absolutely worth your time and money, the multiplayer is probably one of its best features, and I love, love playing with other people across the globe. It's just good times, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I have absolutely had a blast reviewing this game, revisiting it, making videos on it, and just enjoying every second of this game. I highly recommend it if you haven't bought it already, and I would recommend you get the Deluxe Edition for the Switch since there's a little bit more content in it. But if you have a Wii, you can probably pick it, or excuse me, a Wii U, you can probably pick this game up for pretty cheap, like 20 or 30 bucks. I got mine for 25 so, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I want to hear your opinions on this game. Let's have a civil, very civil discussion um, in the comments section below uh, what you guys thought about this game and this review in general. I just want to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, drop a like if you did, and let's share this video around. Let's get it around the Nintendo community. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. So, I want to thank you guys oh so much for watching. Thank you for sticking through to this video. I will see you guys in the next video. I'm Dylan Deere, signing out. Bye-bye!